as winter slowly loosens its icy grip over the land and gives way to new life, the boys of summer tie on their cleats, don their hats, and get ready to take the field. For the fans of each of the teams, hope springs eternal. From 1903 to 1952, the MLB had 16 teams. Do you know what also has 16 teams? And girls? The Catholic Softball Group. Or the CSG. It's always been something I flirted with joining, but never did. This is the year. But it got me to thinking, do I really want to join as a player? No. I want to go big. Why would I lay down a bunt when I could swing for the fences? Since I don't see any bylaws that prohibit me from doing this, I am installing myself as commissioner of the CSG. You may say, Chris, you have never even been to a game. How can you be in charge of the operation? Did the fact that Jack Norworth and Albert Von Tilzer had never been to a game stop them from writing Take Me Out to the Ball Game? No. My first act as commish is to say ish. This is gross. We need to do a league realignment. Why the reorganization of this organization? All the teams are just thrown together like the lovable misfits in the sandlot. The CSG needs a Mountain Landis, and I'm here to help. I am a graphic designer and have noticed that none of the teams have logos. I will have to create them. So I don't have to do this every year. There is a freeze on the team names from henceforth on, just like the MLB was for 50 years. We're going to have two leagues with eight teams apiece. Each of these leagues will have two divisions of four teams and will be grouped together based on their 2022 season nicknames. Let's divide the CSG into the Word League and the Faithful League. From a biblical standpoint, the word can refer to scripture or to Christ. There are 18 names that fit firmly in Abraham's bosom. The two obvious divisions in this league are the biblical division and the Jesus food division. Starting us out from the scrolls of scripture is a rare team name that isn't a questionable pun. God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son. And what we begot here is a softball pretending to be the world with hearts or laces. Now let's step back from the New Testament for a moment and travel back to Old Testament Egypt where things are getting real. There were 10 plagues in the book of Exodus, and the coolest one was the locust. So that's what we're going with. Let's stay in the book of Exodus, shall we? God decided to give Moses some guidelines for those naughty Israelites. I've swapped the tablets out of the hands of Moses because we all know that if softball was invented 4,000 years ago, the bases would have been hewn out of stone. Let us sing praises to God and use David's Psalm 145 as inspiration. I will exalt you, my God the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. It's safe to say that David probably would have been better off if he had left home base and joined his army in the field. The feeding of the 5,000 is the only miracle to be mentioned in all four Gospels. 
In the Gospel of John, it is followed by the Bread of Life discourse, in which our Savior essentially says, Eat the Jesus food so you will live forever. This team name could be referring to the feeding of the 5,000 Jews, but it could also be the feeding of the 4,000 Gentiles since both miracles involve loaves and fishes. There are wheat grains on the stitches because the one who pitches usually makes a lot of bread. Peter and his brother Andrew were fishing for food and that sneaky Jesus said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. In one sentence, he evangelized them by telling them that he could help them evangelize others. Hot cross buns were made on Good Friday in many Christian communities to remember his passion and crucifixion on this day. This logo was made on a random Tuesday in remembrance of our passion for softball. Now that we have exhausted all the teams inspired by the Age of the Father and the Age of the Son, let's turn our attention to the Age of the Holy Spirit. The Faithful League has two divisions, Martyrs and Saints. Those who sacrifice their lives for God are full of the Holy Spirit. Oftentimes those deaths are enough to convert the killers. You would submit too if a flaming Holy Spirit dove containing the full might of Almighty God was hurtling toward you. Peter, the first pope, was martyred in what became Vatican City. When the Romans grabbed him for his crucifixion, did he send out a bat signal? No. He just asked that his cross be turned upside down because he didn't think he was as great as Christ. The lesson here is that even a former lying weenie can transform into a superhero. I readily admit that there are some team names that require a fair amount of stretching to fit into my narrative. But just as St. Thomas Aquinas would appreciate flexible waistbands, so too will you appreciate the fact that the warriors of the faith are willing to fight to the death for the gospel. Illustrated here by the symbols of the four evangelists who wrote them. For a literal example of warriors of faith, we turn to the Cristelos, who were a group of Catholic Mexicans who fought to take back the country from secular oppression. Viva Cristo Rey, long live Christ the King, was their battle cry taken from the martyrdom of Blessed Miguel Pro, who died at the hands of a firing squad. But when the government shot this young priest to death, he inspired an uprising. So they also shot the power of their rule in the head. Saint Scholastica loved hanging out with her brother, Saint Benedict, but she only did it once a year because they were both hermits. One time, when he was about to leave, she secretly prayed to God that she could chill with him a little longer. So God decided to show off and he brought a storm so Benedict couldn't go home that night. All the good angels are saints. All the fallen angels are demons. Since angels are pure spirit, 
They are locked in like Babe Ruth on a fastball and cannot change course. Be like the good angels, be a saint, and be good at softball. If you want to be awesome at softball, it couldn't hurt to ask for the intercession of St. Sebastian, who is the patron of athletes. Good old Seb got his title because of his intense martyrdom, where he took many an arrow to his thorax and kept on running. No one knows for sure what St. Paul was referring to in the second letter to the Corinthians when he wrote about his thorn in the flesh. Was it a physical ailment? Impiety? Your inability to catch a routine pop fly? We don't know. One thing we do know is that when it comes to faith, St. Paul didn't play softball, he played hardball. He was willing to die by the blade of a sword for his beliefs. So there you have it. The 16 permanent team names and logos. Forever. Wait. What's this email here? 20 teams this year effective immediately i resign as commissioner of the csg